here's what we're after today. We want to put a CG object behind some real glass object in our video. We'll be working entirely in Blender with a focus on how we can separate and composite the necessary elements to make this look as photorealistic as possible. Here's an overview of what we'll cover in this video. First, the obvious steps. Film your footage and then solve your 3D camera in Blender. There are plenty of tutorials on how to do this. Now it's time to recreate our real world scene in 3D. This means matching the geometry, lighting, and textures. For the geometry of this shot, I'll make a plane for where our objects sit. Then I'm going to model the glass and place it in our scene as closely as possible. Play through the shot to make sure that everything tracks well and that your objects don't slip out of alignment. If there are some alignment issues, make sure your CG object is resting on the plane and not floating above somewhere. If it still looks bad, your camera track might be off. For lighting, I created a 360 degree HDRI with my Ryko Theta V. Otherwise, add lights in your scene to match the light intensity, color, and shadow quality correctly. For textures, you'll want to recreate the table surface. In my case, I used a simple BSDF shader, changed the color and dialed in the roughness to match as closely as possible. For the glass, I used a principled glass shader, turned down the roughness some, and used a noise texture in the normal input. I tweaked this in rendered view until my HDRI background was being distorted similarly to the original footage. Finally, add in your CG object of choice. In my scene, it's this awesome keyboard model from blendswap.com. Okay, let's talk about how to set all of this up for rendering using the Cycles engine. Make sure your background is set to transparent, hit render, and you'll get this, a fully CG shot, which is not exactly what we're after. So how do we extract just our CG object, shadows, refractions, and reflections? Well, we can control the visibility of these different elements within three areas in Blender Cycles. That is object visibility, collection visibility, and view layer visibility, known as render passes. Now these three levels of control, objects, collections, and view layers, they get pretty complicated when you add them all together. And it's often at this point in a tutorial when you'll hear someone say, if it sounds confusing, you don't have to worry about it as long as you just choose those two passes there. And then we're ready to jump into our render settings here. I understand why people often gloss over this part. It's really complicated and, and it really takes a long time to explain. To compromise, I made an infographic which you can find linked in the description. It should help you understand how objects, collections, and view layers work together to give you control over different visibility options in cycles. Let's start to use these three levels of control to break up our scene. We are going to take our current view layer and use it to render out just our CG object. So we will name the view layer main object. Now within this view layer, we want to control the visibility of our main CG keyboard object, our table, and our glass. So we'll place them all in their own collections. Select each object, press M, hit new collection. So I end up with four collections, one for my scene camera and any lights, one for my main object, the keyboard, one for my table, and one for my glass. Now, if we right click a collection and go to view layer, we can set the visibility of the collection and all the objects that are inside it. You'll see in my infographic, there is a section about these collection visibility settings. For our purposes, we want to set the glass collection to hold out, which will mask out wherever our glass is. Then we'll set the table collection as indirect, meaning it will show indirectly in our keyboard. Now, if we hit render, we have just our main object without any part of it that goes behind the glass. Main object view layer, Completed. Let's create another view layer and name it shadow. You'll see we have the same collections in this layer as before. All view layers share the same collections. Now we want to extract just the shadows cast by the keyboard onto the table. We'll go to our table object and in the properties tab under visibility, we'll make it a shadow catcher. This is part of the object visibility control I was talking about. Again, we want our glass to mask out the shadow, so we'll set that collection to hold out. Now, even though our glass is set to hold out, it will still cast a shadow. So I'm going to go to my glass object visibility settings and disable shadow. I'll also disable diffuse and glossy while I'm here. 
Now my glass object will not show up in any shadows, diffuse surfaces, or glossy reflection surfaces, which is good because our real glass already shows up in those ways. Finally, we'll set our main object collection to indirect only, so we only see the shadows it makes. Now shadows are done. We have just the shadows masked out by the glass. Shadow view layer completed. Let's create yet another view layer and name this one Reflections. In this view layer, we'll capture the reflections of our CG object on the table surface. To start, we are going to duplicate the table collection we have, right click, duplicate collection, and turn the original one off. We're doing this because the original table object is now set to a shadow catcher, and we don't want to change that. So now in this duplicate collection, we'll also have created a duplicated table object. We'll go back into the object visibility tab and disable the shadow catcher so that it shows up normally. Now we'll set our main object and glass collections to set holdout. And in our render view, we should see nothing but the table with shadows and reflections on it. To get just the reflections of the keyboard in the table, we'll enable certain render passes for this view layer. Remember, this is our third level of controlling what we see in our scene. In the Render Passes tab then, let's enable the glossy indirect pass. So why did we choose this? Allow me to illustrate. The light rays which show the reflection of our keyboard in our table are the rays that leave our light source, bounce off our keyboard, bounce off the table, and into the camera. These particular light rays would be labeled glossy light rays, since the last surface they interact with before hitting the camera is a partially glossy or reflective surface. And since our light rays bounce more than once, we choose indirect. Altogether, we get glossy indirect. See this section of the infographic linked in the description for more information. Now, if we enable render single layer and we render this view layer alone, in the render view window, we can then toggle down and view what this glossy indirect render pass looks like. Note, in Blender 2.81 and above, you can view different render passes in the viewport by going into rendered view and toggling this menu to view different passes. Since we're done setting up this view layer, we'll uncheck render single layer in the view layer tab. Reflections view layer, check. Let's create another view layer and name it object through glass. Now, in this view layer, we want our keyboard and glass collection to be fully visible like they are by default. We'll disable that duplicate table collection we made. To get just the keyboard showing through our glass, we'll again enable certain render passes for this view layer. So let's go to the render passes tab and we'll enable the transmission indirect pass. In the viewport, I can see what this looks like. So why did we choose this? Well, we want to extract just the light rays in our scene that leave our light source, bounce off our keyboard, go through our glass object and into the camera. These particular light rays would be labeled transmission light rays, since the last surface they interact with before hitting the camera is this transparent transmitting glass surface. And we chose indirect since these light rays bounce more than once. Altogether, we get transmission indirect. In addition, we'll enable the glossy indirect pass, which looks like this. I'll mention why we're doing that later. Now looking at our transmission indirect pass, there's one problem. We're seeing our HGRI environment reflecting throughout the glass. If you're not using an HGRI, you still might be seeing the gray of your world shader throughout the glass. To solve this, in the world shader editor, we can add a light path node and add an invert to the is glossy ray and plug this into the strength of the background. Now, you'll see we no longer have the HGRI background showing in our transmission indirect pass. So when we render out this object through glass view layer, we'll have these nodes connected to have this effect. But for the other view layers we've already made, we'll disconnect this so that the HGRI behaves like normal. Object through glass, view layer, check. Finally, I'm going to add just one more view layer. Name this one glass mask. Just follow what I'm doing and I'll explain why later. In this layer, we're going to duplicate our main object collection, turn the original one off. For this duplicated object, we'll set all the materials to a default emission shader. We'll duplicate the table collection, turn off the other two ones we have, make sure the shadow catcher is disabled, and assign the table the same emission shader. In our render passes tab, we will again enable the transmission indirect and glossy indirect passes. And here's what the transmission indirect pass looks like. 
This render pass will serve as our black and white mask when we're compositing in the glass. Note, for this view layer, we will also want to have that world shader limitation hooked up. Glass mask view layer completed. Now we have our five view layers set up. Since all view layers share the same collections and we added more collections as we went, we'll have to go back through our earlier view layers and completely disable the unneeded collections from those layers. Just unclick the box to completely disable a collection. Also to review, as far as render passes go, our main object view layer will output the combined and Z pass, which are enabled by default, which we want, this is good. The same for our shadow layer. A reflection layer will also output the glossy indirect pass we enabled. Our object through glass layer will output the default passes in addition to the transmission indirect pass and glossy indirect pass we enabled. And our glass mask layer will output the same. Now we have to render out our first three layers on their own since we need the world shader enabled as normal. We'll disable the last two layers by unchecking Use for Render. Then hit Render. Save out this image somewhere as an open EXR multi-layer file. Then only enable the two last few layers we made, hook up that light path node in our world shader, render and save another open EXR multi-layer file. Now we'll head over to our compositor tab to start combining these different elements together. Make sure use nodes and backdrop are on. I'm going to delete everything here to show you how we'd start from scratch. Create a viewer node and composite output node. We'll add an image input node and bring in the image sequence for our background footage. Let's distort this to match the render size. Hold Ctrl Shift and click to view a node. Next, we'll add another image input node. We'll open our first EXR file. We can see that we can switch between each of the first three view layers here. Based on the view layer selected, we have different output connections representing the render passes we enabled. So how do we composite all these different render passes into our scene? Well, Blender Cycles has this master equation that is used, which tells us how to reconstruct an image if you render out all the passes. We'll see in this equation that most of the time we are simply adding the light passes together, that is, using a color mix node set to add. Only with color passes do we multiply the previous nodes. Then all this is added together again to get the final combined pass. And remember, this combined pass is what we output by default. So when we enable certain render passes, we're selecting specific ingredients of this combined pass. In summary, this add and multiply node are the main ones we'll use when compositing. You'll also commonly use an alpha over node when compositing in a combined pass, like our main object, which has a clear alpha channel. We'll start by adding in some shadows. There are lots of ways to composite shadows. I'll add a color mix node set to multiply, drop the alpha into the factor slot, set the top color to white and bottom color to black. This will give us a fully black and white image. Let's add a color ramp to adjust the range of black and white we want. Link in an RGB curves to add any needed color or brightness or darkness to the shadows. Then we'll add a color mix node set to multiply and multiply our background image by the shadows output. Boom, shadows done. Next, we'll add our main object on top of the shadows. Duplicate our previous image input node and select the main object view layer. Then we'll simply use an alpha over node to composite it on top of the background and shadow. Next, let's add the object showing through the glass. Add an image input node and open up that second EXR file we rendered out. Select the object through glass view layer. Remember, we want to work with the transmission indirect render pass we created. Now, how do we put this on top of what we have already? Well, maybe we use a color mix node, set it to add, and try to add it in. No, that doesn't look quite right. What about an alpha over node? Uh, that doesn't do much since our transmission indirect pass has that black background baked in with no alpha. We could try to key out the black background with a luma key node, uh, but those results look pretty bad. 
What would be ideal would be to have some sort of black and white mask that shows us exactly where our CG object shows through our glass and masks out everything else. Well, you'll, you'll remember that we made this, so let's use it. We'll duplicate our image input node and switch to the glass mask layer we created. Let's add a color ramp to make sure we crush the black and white values enough. We'll put this mask as the factor input in our alpha over node. Our image we've composited so far will be the first input, and the object through glass will go into the second input, taking from the transmission indirect output. Phew. Good job. Take a deep breath, and let's continue. Now let's put in the reflection. Duplicate our image input node, select the reflection view layer. Now, how do we composite this in? Well, in our equation here, we usually add the glossy indirect pass. So we'll try that, and it seems to look good. And yes, this is the correct choice. And if you want more glossiness than this gives you, duplicate the add node like this. Now there's one final element that I added in to help sell the total effect. And that comes back to the glossy indirect pass that we created with our object through glass view layer. So let's duplicate that previous node and we'll add in the glossy indirect information. Again, using our black and white mask in the factor input. And to tone this down, I'll add another color mix node set to multiply and pick a gray value that looks good. Now we have a composite that looks awesome. Feel free to add in notes to tweak sharpness and to work with color to improve the overall realism. And to render out the final sequence, select Use for Render for our first three view layers only. Make sure our HDRI is correct, and in the compositor, we'll have to make sure our composite node has a render layers node going into it. This is because whatever is hooked up into this composite node is what is saved out when we hit render animation. And we want to save out our render layers. Set an output for the correct frame range and select open EXR multi-layer sequence. Let that render out by hitting render animation. Then we'll turn off these first three layers and only render out our object through glass and glass mask view layers. Make sure to change that HDRI and render out another OpenEXR multi-layer sequence to a different location. Now in the compositor, everywhere we have those image input nodes, we'll switch out our new OpenEXR sequences instead of just those single frames. In the same way, we can select the correct view layer and replace the connections for each node. Now that this is all said and done, we're ready to make a final render. Make sure the final composite is hooked up to the composite node, set an output type of PNG, hit render animation, and this should go pretty fast outputting final PNGs of the entire composite we made. So there you have it. Thank you for following along. Uh, congratulations if you made it this far. If you'd like, you can download the Blender project file over at my Patreon linked in the description. These tutorials take a while to put together um, and I hope to do a lot more. And so I'd be honored to have your financial support in doing that. More than that, if you like this tutorial, um, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe for when more do come out, and until then, bye-bye. I am holding my phone with a sock over it so that you can have impeccable audio for this tutorial. You are welcome.